Yeah, 12 o'clock, not quite 1 o'clock, <laughs> depending on what. Might be in another uh, time zone, but let's let our Chief Executive um, <coughs> get himself prepared. So, um, important that we're all wearing our masks. I know, Joan, you've got an exemption, so... Um, Just um, firstly, uh, you're right there, Jim. Uh, firstly, uh, welcome to um, this extraordinary uh, meeting. Um, I've got apologies from uh, Councillor Stewart, who's uh, unwell. Councillor Blackie's receiving his royal honour, so, which is great for him. Uh, and Councillor Doody uh, is an apology as well. Could I have someone move that those apologies be accepted? Councillor Atkins is seconded by Councillor Williams. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary to clear that, carried. Uh, any conflicts of interest to be declared? Right, we come to item 3, 3.1, the COVID-19 protection uh, framework. That's a report in the name of our Chief Executive. We've also got Liz and Chris with us. So who's taking, is it you taking the lead, Liz? Great. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Um, so as mentioned, uh, Chris and I will be uh, providing a summary of the report and presenting it today on behalf of the Chief Executive. So we're here to summarise key matters facing the Council and I'm going to hopefully give a bit of a, a pre-see before you make your decision. <clears throat> so to give some background, on the 18th of October 2021, Cabinet agreed to shift our approach for managing the Delta variant of COVID-19 from an elimination strategy to an approach based on minimisation and protection and to use the COVID-19 protection framework or the framework to give effect to that new strategy. The strategy reflects that a different approach is needed for Delta, focusing on minimisation um, and reducing the impact of COVID-19 in our communities. The Canterbury DHB has achieved 91% of the population is fully vaccinated, 96% of the region is partially vaccinated. There was a press release issued by Council on the 2nd of December stating that Council will be delaying its decision and that is the reason for the report today. So the framework introduces a new flexible three-level approach to managing COVID-19 in the community. You have green where limited community transmission is occurring and COVID-19 case numbers are at levels that the health system is able to manage. Orange where the community transmission is increasing and putting pressure on our health system. And red, the health system is facing an unsustainable number of hospitalizations and action is needed to protect our vulnerable people. The framework has been designed to provide greater freedom for vaccinated um, uh, people in our communities and to reduce the burden on our public health restrictions. It is a targeted approach and different elements will apply at different levels. And as Council is already aware, our current region is uh, situated at an orange. Being orange means that uh, many general settings still need to occur. We still need to keep accurate records and scan QR codes. Masks are mandatory on flights, public transport, taxis, retail, public venues, and are encouraged in other facilities. Public facilities are open with capacity limits based on the one metre distancing, and this has been a change to the previous alert levels. Workplaces are open, education is open with public health measures in place uh, and uh, with regards to the mandate order and there are specified outdoor community events which are allowed. If vaccine passes are used, there are no limits on hospitality gatherings, events, close contact businesses and gyms. However, if vaccine passes are not used, hospitality must be contactless. Gatherings can only have a maximum of 50 people based on one metre distancing and close contact businesses include events and gyms which are not able to operate. Council need to consider health and safety obligations as a PCBU and as persons carrying out a business or undertaking, chief executives have an obligation under the Health and Safety at Work Act to maintain a workplace which is free from harm so far as is reasonably practicable. 
As part of this, the chief executive has had to undertake a risk assessment across the organisation to determine what positions are required to be held by vaccinated people. So the organisation has completed such a risk assessment on our aquatic centres and our libraries. Um, and the risk assessment rating has determined that they rate at a level four, which is considered to be a high risk. When considering um, applying vaccination passes to our libraries and aquatic, aquatic centres, um, there is an eight step process which has been um, issued from the government to help us to understand uh, whether we choose to apply these passes or not. Given the fact that we are considered to be a public facility, it is down to us to make that determination. Uh, as part of our risk assessment process, we have considered a number of factors um, and agencies who consider re um, requiring members of the public who are accessing our premises where public services are provided. The consideration of these factors includes the need to ensure accessibility of services, the nature of the services provided, our health and safety risk assessment and vaccination policy, and any considerations under the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act and the Human Rights Act, including any takanga or emph emphasisation of physical presence that applies in that regard. So as mentioned, um, we have applied that process. It is staff's recommendation that the aquatic facilities and our libraries, which includes Rua Tanifa and the Oxford Library and Service Centre, move to vaccination passports, uh, passes effective from next week. And um, I will take the rest of the report as read and hopefully to answer any questions which council would like to ask. Thanks, Liz. Chris, do you want to add anything? No, that's, that's fine. Jim? Thank you, Liz. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'll just draw our councillor's attention to page 21 of the agenda, which is part of the legal opinion from Simpson Grierson and provided to all local authorities. And basically what it says is, under the, the current law, it's developing at pace, um, but it would be, a council would be unlikely to justify mandatory vaccinations across all aspects of its operations <coughs> At, as of today's date. So that has had a bearing in terms of those um, high-risk roles um, and the reason why we're going for double vaccination at this stage for those groups. Thank you. Um, any questions of colleagues? Uh, count, sorry, sorry uh, Councillor Barnett, I'll look to... <laughs> I'm not very good at looking at this side. <laughs> Councillor Barnett first, followed by Councillor Redmond. Thanks very much for your report, Liz and Chris. Um, I just want to clarify what happens with children, particularly for the aquatics facilities, because that's a very sort of grey area at the moment, particularly because they're then talking about 5 to 12s eventually being vaccinated. Um, for children under 14 are supposed to always have a parent with them. So if, if a parent is vaccinated and a child is, uh, is 13 or 12 and is not 13 and not vaccinated, do they have to, they still have to have the child vaccinated? Yeah, so any children over 12 um, will have to be vaccinated. Um, and we do have, for instance, school groups that come in with children in a certain year where we know that they're all over 12. Um, our staff will, um, uh, they, they can check to see whether a child's 12, but we will leave that up to their discretion. Um, depending, um, but you're right, they have to have an adult with them if they're 12 coming into the facility. So they would both have, uh, have to be checked. Yeah. And so when the, the 5 to 12 might come in, will there be a... a do you think there's likely to be a time period where there might be a bit of a crossover while that's happening? Um, uh, I, I, would, I would hope that there is. Um, things change rapidly yes. and we need to respond to those changes the best we can um, with the best information that we have. So we would be looking at what the guidance is from the government and then we would be making decisions operationally around how, that, how we'd roll that out at the time. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Redmond followed by Councillor Atkinson. Uh, thank you uh, Liz and Chris. Um, this is quite an important matter for residents. Have you considered alternative means of delivery of services to unvaccinated people? For example, the library. I think previously we operated a contactless system. Um, is that something we could uh, consider? Yes, so we absolutely have considered those things. So the, um, you'll uh, you refer to the, um, I think we were calling them my book bags as opposed to my food bags at the time when we were in lockdown. 
Um, so we will be operating those again and we'll be making sure that we market those to people so that they know they're available and we can um, have people that don't have vaccination passes collect those from outside the library. We'll also continue to push our e-resources, which um, through the lockdowns have become extremely popular. And we'll also have library staff who are available on the phone to assist people where they can with the likes of technology issues um, and support that they might need that they would usually get when they come into the library. Uh, the pools is a little bit different as you can, as you can um, uh, imagine. Uh, Councillor Atkinson, Deputy Mayor Atkinson, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Chris, particularly around pools, but as well in our libraries, what have we got in place to actually handle um, uh, almost embarrassment, if you like, to children that may be excluded, particularly if they're in a class of children or whatever and they're not vaccinated? What have we got in place to make sure that they're not uh, seen as segregated or seen as um, an embarrassing situation? Because, you know, I mean, you know how cruel children can be to other children unintentionally at their age, but it happens. So with school groups, um, and that's probably uh, where that's likely to, um, potent well, potentially to be the case, um, we've, uh, the schools have already contacted us and said, um, are we able to um, provide you with the vaccination passes um, uh, without the kids having to walk through and all, all show their passes? Um, so we're working on ways in which we can do that, which um, don't necessarily involve the kids specifically, so that um, the school can actually sort out uh, those sort of difficulties before they actually um, come, so that we know that all the kids that are turning up from those schools already are double vaccinated before they come. Um, when, if, if people do arrive um, and uh, they are with their parents, for an, uh, as an example, and um, they don't um, have a vaccination pass, um, we will have to at that time say, look, I'm really, really sorry, um, you can't come into the pool. The, 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 the swimming pools, we are operationally, it's a little bit easier. We have um, one point of access where they have to swipe in already. We are able to um, load the um, expiry date of their vaccination pass onto their code so that once it's actually loaded on once, they can just swipe through without having to talk to anybody and that'll let them through the gate. And when that expires, um, they'll have to re um, or tell us when the next expiry date is on that um, vaccination pass. The libraries, um, a little bit different, they can't do that. Um, it will just be site only, so that we're actually having a look at the vaccination passes as they come in. Um, and, and again, um, making sure that we get that messaging out through our Facebook, through our um, website, so that people know um, that uh, if council make the decision today, they will be required to, to show that when they enter. Further questions? <clears throat> Councillor Bryan. So I went to a crash at the Kaipo Workingmen's Club two days ago. Uh, where a car grossly intoxicated driver drove into a fence. And I went back yesterday to get a, because uh, I need a quote for reparations. In order for me to speak to the manager of the Kaipui Workingmen's Club, I had to produce this, which is my vaccination pass. What's happening out here? That, that's the concern I've got. Uh, absolutely. Um, so with regards to our process, there are a number of stages that we do need to go through. So at the moment, the matter facing us um, is about the public facility, so codex and libraries. Uh, later on today, we will be looking at socialising a, a draft policy to our organisation with regards to the other roles that we are also in the process of risk assessing. So those roles will require a determination about uh, what level of risk they are and what we choose to do as an organisation about providing vaccine passes in certain parts of our business and across certain roles. That hasn't occurred yet. We are not forced to do that as yet. And it's really important that we, we make sure that we look at every single role and consider all of the alternative options that are available to us. And uh, getting, gaining access to the building, for example, will be something that we consider as part of that policy. However, the service centres at Oxford and at Kaiapoi um, are part of those buildings, so by proxy, they will, you would have to um, show your pass entering those buildings to talk to the staff there. Okay, further questions? We've got a series of <coughs> recommendations. Is someone prepared to move? I'll, I'll move it. Your seconder, uh, Robbie. Um, it's an extraordinary um, decision that we're faced with today, uh, but this is an extraordinary situation that not only we face as a community, but communities across our, co our, co our country, 
and also globally are facing, it's not like nothing else. And we um, are gathering more information as we go through. I, I believe in the vaccination program that the government have instituted and the protection that it brings to our, our communities. Uh, <clears throat> I've also heard from businesses that they're welcoming the traffic light um, uh, system and it's important because it's going to hopefully prevent lockdowns as we know it and for uh, our businesses to be able to function and our community to be able to uh, to be able to be about uh, and be able to be active throughout that without being in constant lockdowns as we as we have been facing. I know our businesses are welcoming this approach and people in our community are also expressing strong opinions. There are people definitely on both sides of this conversation and I definitely understand the position uh, uh, that, that is put forward. I've had really strong feedback on both sides, uh, fairly robust in some of the emails I've received and the calls um, of people who certainly have strong opinions uh, and I, I fully understand that and that's the absolute democratic right in the, this country that we live in. But at the end of the day we've got to make a decision here today uh, that protects our staff and our community. It would be helpful if there were a lot clearer guidelines um, and that we aren't having to make uh, interpretations of about what the rules mean. But faced with the work that our staff have done, and I commend Liz and Chris and the team and our Chief Executive for the work that's been going on uh, to understand the position and also to appreciate where, what other councils are doing as well. We are faced with a decision uh, and a recommendation here today that is going to, to curb some freedom for some people uh, and I certainly don't make this decision lightly today. Um, but uh, I don't see we have another decision to make based on the information that's presented. And I do note that in um, G that there is further work that our staff are doing as well. Um, require uh, looking into vaccine pa um, uh, pass requirements for the organisation and that will be subject to further consideration. So we're having this extraordinary meeting today because our staff um, need the certainty and we need to provide that certainty to our community. Uh, so that's where we're faced today and I'm supportive of the uh, recommendations. Um, Who's, just remind me who's seconded that. Uh, it was Councillor Bryant, sorry. Yep, thanks. Uh, well, look, I, I endorse your, your uh, comments, Mr Mayor. Um, I've got uh, four family members who are employed uh, by Council, three of whom are in the aquatic facilities. Uh, they are vaccinated. Um, however, there is a very good friend of ours who has chosen at this stage, hopefully she'll change her mind, not to get uh, vaccinated, and she is brilliant at her job. Um, and I see that situation as tragic, but as you mentioned, it's her democratic right to choose not to. Um, hopefully, hopefully, because I know her family want her to get vaccinated, she will change her mind. The, the reality is um, we're going to be faced with more challenges as we go into the new year and next year. And, and I just sincerely hope that the 10% of the population not yet uh, vaccinated make the decision to get vaccinated, accepting that there will be about 500 in our New Zealand community uh, who are unable to get uh, uh, vaccinated. Um, my concern is that perhaps we are not going far enough, uh, early enough, but having said that, I know we've got very good staff who will be monitoring the, uh, the situation because they do have concerns about people walking through this front door out here and going into our customer services uh, section uh, without uh, being uh, uh, vaccinated. Um, you know, in a, an, another capacity, uh, we are looking at uh, border controls up, up north. Um, well, in fact, I'm not, not even going to go there because we've got the press present. Um, but no, I endorse and agree with the recommendations. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Redmond. Uh, I'd like to move an amendment, Mr Mayor. The addition of Clause H, which would read that staff where feasible and safe implement alternative means of delivery of services 
to unvaccinated residents. Okay, well, actually, to be honest, that's what we're doing. Any of you, I'm quite relaxed about incorporating that into the into the motion. Is there a disagreement with that? So, would you like to would you like to yes, speak to I'll, the I'll, overall motion I'll, that's I'll, incorporating if, your suggestion? If, if that's incorporated, Mr. Mayor, I'll certainly speak to the motion. Um, it's unfortunate we're in the position of having to consider these matters, and it's not something that any of us take lightly. We may have divisions within families of people vaccinated and unvaccinated, um, but I've still come to the conclusion that vaccination is the best and only defence against COVID, which has um, influenced my thoughts. The rules are inconsistent. I'm planning on going camping at Christmas. The camp doesn't require passes. There are shared communi communal facilities. So, you know, it would be helpful if there could be guidance in these areas um, from the government. I do respect people's right to choose. Um, however, at the end of the day, we have to look at the greater good. And if we can provide an alternative way of providing services to unvaccinated people, then I think that's the best we can do in the circumstances. So I'm in favour of the motion as extended. Yes, it became quite clear looking at the risk analysis that we have to do this to protect our staff at work. So this was a legal requirement under the Health and Safety Act, but it was not undertaken lightly. Uh, we, we strive as a council to provide services to every resident in our district, no matter who they are, what beliefs they have, um, but this legislation has made it Im impossible for us to continue at, at the status quo. Um, my concern I've got is that some of this legislation contradicts other legislation um, because it's been done so quickly. For example, a parent is not allowed to leave a child unsupervised under 14. And so the 12 and 13 year olds kind of get caught up in that. Um, so if, if um, they follow the vaccination status generally of the parent. Um, so you've got, you've got families which the adults are vaccinated, the children aren't quite vaccinated yet. So it is a very tricky situation because you can't leave a 12-year-old and a 13-year-old on your own. So um, there are going to be some anomalies which are, we're going to have to face over the next few months, um, which is going to make it tricky. But at the end of the day, safety is paramount. There's a story in the newspaper today about a young girl who went to a birthday party at a restaurant and caught the COVID from an unvaccinated person at <coughs> that event. We can't have that happen at a poll. When someone's at a pool, there is no protection. And if they're unvaccinated and more likely to pass it on, then we um, are putting all of those children who come to our pools at risk. And I just, I can't, um, can't support that. So I, am, I really, really respect the staff for being so careful and taking the time to consider this very, very carefully. But in the interim, hopefully it will change. Um, in the interim, this is something we're going to have to do. I really support Councillor Redmond's talk about providing alternate services, particularly with the library, because that library is very, very important to all families and all people in our district. So thank you very, very much to all the staff who are putting in this extra time and effort to make sure we look after all the residents in our district. Thanks, Councillor Barlett. Councillor Deputy Mayor Atkinson. <coughs> thank you, Mr Mayor. I just, um, look, I, su I support this again, the same as everybody else. This is really, <laughs> really hard to do. Um, but we're elected to make hard decisions sometimes, and this is one of those situations we're in. The reasoning for my questioning is that, um, particularly in libraries, <coughs> children are encouraged to attend libraries um, uh, over the age of, of, of 12 by themselves because they're safe places for which they need to visit, and there's a need as well as a want. And um, uh, life can be cruel sometimes, and actually singling out children of, of a certain age and saying, well, yep, Johnny, you can come in, but Peter, you have to go home, um, is a really difficult thing that our staff are going to have to do. And I have huge sympathy, and I, I, I really do implore that we do have the mechanisms in place to handle that in, a, in an extremely diplomatic manner. And I trust our staff to do that. But I just want to put it across the table. And, and, and even in pools, when you're getting over that 
14 age group, you know. Um, you know, high school students can be pretty mean to each other at times. Um, we've seen that in the past in many places. And uh, if this is another situation where people, bullies, choose to be bullies, this, this can be exploited for that. So um, I just want to reiterate that, uh, you know, we need to make sure that we have mechanisms in place to deal with that particular situation by itself. Adults are, are crueler than most people um, to each other at times, and uh, they have the me mechanisms to deal with it, where uh, younger people uh, certainly um, try but may not have those mechanisms. So I really want to reinforce that, that we make sure that we're in the right place for those people who unfortunately are caught up in this like everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Atkinson. Further speakers? Just briefly on the right of reply, I think the comments have been well stated and I agreed with, uh, definitely agree with uh, the addition suggested by um, or put forward by Councillor Redmond. I think where we can and as the staff indicated, we should definitely look at alternatives and we showed that um, through the times of COVID how uh, flexible we were for our community and continue to be. I know our staff do that every day. They do an amazing job for us and they will and for our community and I know that they will do that. And in terms of our facilities, as Robbie, uh, Councillor Brian mentioned, heard from um, Liz and Chris that that's under active consideration and G does uh, cover that point. Um, the campgrounds is an interesting one that Councillor Redmond uh, raised because I've heard of other campgrounds where they are requiring uh, vaccine certificates and in fact, um, been quite strict on that. So what is really required from the government is very clear guidelines so that there's less ambiguity and it's less open to interpretation because it makes it difficult for everyone uh, in that situation where you're having to uh, interpret what it should be, whereas in actual fact the traffic light system is pretty clear um, when you look at that and you go through that system. So, um, so the better that there can be guide, guidelines um, where it can be, uh, and I do urge the government to do that, so it makes it, uh, and to a degree I hate the word mandation because we don't like it in other contexts, but there does need to be a, a much clearer system there so that our staff aren't having to scramble around trying to uh, come up with what it means and how we should interpret it and look at the difference there is between councils right throughout the country because of that. All right, so uh, with that, I'm going to put the recommendation. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Contrary. I declare that carried. So I think I'm correct in saying that our next meeting, yes, will be um, on the 1st of February. Um, so it's our last formal council meeting of the year. So I'd like to wish you all uh, a very Merry Christmas. Uh, and I know that um, you're coming to my home for a little bit of Christmas cheer later, so I look forward to seeing you from 4.30 uh, with partners um, today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks, Liz and Chris and Jim. Cheers. <laughs>